Hey, Danielle. Hi. Uh, thanks for being here. Right. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Love it, though. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, sometimes when you do these types of things, um, it's, it, how quickly people can abuse the the situation. So we learned long ago to lock everything down um, because, yeah, you just cannot. Are you recording this to share? I had a couple of teammates that can't make it that we're hoping to get in. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the intention. We are recording currently. If uh, if you don't like being recorded, then you know you can pop off camera. That's fine. Some people are uncomfortable that way, but uh, absolutely, we're just going to give another minute or two for for everybody to get in, and then we'll get started. Do, do, do. Lynette is joining us as well. Fantastic. Yeah, these are long overdue. We, we used to do them before the uh, pandemic, but we haven't done any since. So I was like, why aren't we doing these again? It's a great way to, to help, you know, other partners and customers and what have you. So why not? Okay, well, we're going to get started. It looks like there's five of us. Exciting. Okay. Um, no, that's good. That means, you know, a lot more uh, stuff for you guys. Oh, is Dan sharing? Dan, did you share your screen? Oh, couldn't unmute. Everybody drink. Yeah, that was me. Okay. All right. No worries. I'll I'll uh I'm gonna share my screen to start, but I'll hand it over okay. to you when it's your turn. All right, Dan, Dan's part of the team here. Um, so welcome officially, everybody. Suddenly he switches to his training voice. Oh yeah. No, I'll not do that today. Um, so today we're talking about make and teamwork. A lot of fun. Uh, just just quick show of hands. Uh, who is actually familiar with with using Make already? Um, everyone went off camera, so now I can't see hands. But you could potentially use emojis, so that works. Okay, so Hannah's used uh, used it a bit. Wonderful. Okay, uh, Lynette's used it a bit. Great, that makes sense. Okay, um, so I'm sure we're going to end up talking about it later. But uh, having worked with many of the other project management platforms like the Asanas, the Mondays, the Jiras, all those other things out there, unfortunately, the teamwork integration in Make is is one of the uh, worst. But we'll we'll get into that in a bit. Um, doesn't mean teamwork is bad. Teamwork is not responsible for that. That's something on the make end. And uh, Melody and myself and Dan have been working quite a bit with make recently to make them aware of some of the issues and why there's a lost opportunity here. So hopefully in the near future, it'll be uh, even better to work with than it is now. Okay. Um, so agenda today, we're going to talk about us a bit, then we're just going to get right into it. Something I want to point out, though, is this, uh, even though there's a formalized Q&A at the end, if we have time, that's not really how I work. I like interaction. I like people to participate. I like us to do it more like a working session than a webinar. So to that end, there's three ways that you guys can ask questions. The first is the easiest. Interrupt me. I'm not going to get offended. Interrupt Dan. He might get offended, but do it anyway. Um, that's your first method is just speak up. And we'll have a conversation about it. And what will end up happening is it'll be like, hey, actually, we're about to cover that. Perfect. Or could you please put a pin in that? We'll, we'll deal with that at the end because it's a bit off topic. Or I didn't even think of that. Wonderful. Let's go look into that now. So we can go on tangents. We're adults. We can do whatever we want. And uh, that's the first way. The second way, of course, is to ask in chat. Uh, Dan will try and answer the questions there if I can't see it because I'm full screen right now. And the third way is just use those little emojis. And then again, Dan will interrupt me and say, hey, we got some questions, that kind of thing. With a small group, I don't th expect there to be that much issue with uh, getting questions answered. But if I do go too quickly, then just force me to slow down even say, hey, I have a question. Could you slow down? Or hey, could you speed up? Or hey, this doesn't make sense. Could you take a minute? So just interrupt. Everyone's good with that? See, this is where you participate. You give those little emoji thumbs ups or you say, yeah, I'll interrupt Marcus. And there we go. Okay, cool. So let's talk about how-to project. I'm not sure if many of you have heard of us, um, but how-to project and teamwork have a long and glorious relationship together. Uh, we actually are their number one worldwide training partner. We have done over, I think, a thousand different teamwork trainings to date for, for various companies around the world, which has been awesome and exciting. 
Uh, we're a premier solutions partner. So with integrations on the enterprise level, with marketing agencies, um, we've had the privilege to do a lot of really cool integration work and work management work for uh, teamwork and uh, with teamwork. Um, I actually authored the original partner certification exam. So how many of you guys are partners? I, I can't see anything, but I'm assuming some of you are partners, right? There we go. There's a hand. Okay. So yeah, so the original partner program that came out back in, I think, 2009, 2010, um, Teamwork was a much smaller company then. And so Peter asked me to actually author the partner exam because I knew Teamwork and still do better than Teamwork knows Teamwork some days, it feels. And what was awesome about that is it really helped to launch our, our relationship and uh, set a standard that you know partners had to follow. Um, now, of course, as the partners know, the partner program has changed many times over the years, but that's still something I like to mention. And we are their oldest partner, having been a partner since 2008. So when I say we've been around teamwork for a while, we've been around teamwork for a while. Cool. Um, I always like to mention this slide. It's one of my favorite quotes, and it's basically Bill Gates' lazy quote, always hires lazy people because lazy people find an easy way to do it. That ties into not just what we do at How To Project. There's a good sell. We're a group of lazy people. Uh, but it ties into teamwork and automation and just, you know, the whole idea of templates and triggers and everything else that we love inside of these types of platforms. It's so that we don't have to spend the time doing things that a system could do for us. So Make is actually going to be an extension on that because what Make is, um, for those that haven't used Make, it essentially says, okay, I have this product over here and I want to talk to this product over here, Make let you do that. It, it has libraries from both products that say, I want to do this thing over here. And can I, and if make says yes, you can, it's, it's a lot like Zapier and a couple of other of those programs out there, but what sets make apart is while make has this node based, super user-friendly interface, much like Zapier. Um, and a lot of CRM software is actually structured like this as well. Nowadays, they, also have the huge potential for, for doing a lot of uh, dynamic variables, for doing your own custom apps, for creating your own code within your scenarios. Like they do everything that Zapier does that's user friendly, but then they've got this underlying powerhouse engine that just lets you make anything possible, which, which I think is why it's called make now instead of Integromat. Um, but yeah, it's a phenomenal platform and it's, it's our go-to platform of choice. Uh, it's not as compatible as Zapier yet, but again, with the fact that you can customize what you're doing so much, it just makes sense for, for partners to be on this platform. We, we don't make any money saying that. It's just true. It's a fantastic platform. So having said that, what I'm going to do is uh, actually turn it over to Dan, and we're just going to jump right into the work. How's that sound? Dan, if you want to share your screen and, and we'll jump right into it. There we go. Okay. So the first automation we're going to go over is the ready for review automation. And the, the history of this automation is the, you know, I'm sure as you guys teach your clients, you know, when you want somebody to review the task and let them know, put a comment, right? Notify them. We found that wasn't sufficient for two reasons. One, Everybody, our, our team is trained to look at the my work for you. Look at, you know, look at these things to know what you need to do. And our review work wasn't just five minutes. It was often 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. And so we wanted to start adding the reviewers as an assignee once they got to the appropriate column in the board view. Um, however, that had its own complications where we needed to do a little bit more project management to keep that up to date. What I ended up doing in the spirit of being lazy and not wanting to do that project management of assigning and reassigning reviewers was I made this automation. Um, now, every automation starts with triggers and or one trigger and then has actions afterwards. So what is the trigger? That's always the first question. How do we get the data where we want it to go? So over here, if I go to teamwork, we go to settings, we go to webhooks. I've actually made a little webhook called card updated. So when the board column is updated, when it moves from in progress to ready to ready for review, I made this little hey, Dan, Yeah. If I'm not familiar with how to make a web hook, how did you do that? Let's go in there. So again, settings, web hooks. If we click add a web hook, 
Teamwork's got a good, they've got a lot, they've got a pretty expansive API. So you would find what your trigger is, maybe test it a little bit. In our case, it was card updated, right? Now this endpoint URL, you might be wondering, where do I get that URL? Apps like make.com, Zapier, et cetera, tend to have, if we were to look, a webhook app. And when I click custom webhook, I'm gonna put it over here. I'm gonna click it, oh, choose a webhook. I'm gonna make a new webhook. When I name it, test webhook, save, it's gonna give me that URL. So make is giving us the URL and telling teamwork when card updated, send the data to this URL. And then we would click add webhook, make sure that's active, it is. And then every time a card is updated in teamwork, this webhook would receive it. And from there, what that looks like is, let's actually go test it. So I'm gonna disable that test one that I made. So now I don't recall which the test one is, so that's fine, I'll leave that. I don't think you saved it. I did not, but that's okay. So I go to the board view, I'm gonna move, let's say, set up Facebook ads. So this is ready, run once, so it's waiting. I've got it just waiting for the webhook. I'm gonna move set up Facebook ads to ready for review. Move back here. This always happens during the webinars. <laughs> Let me retest it real quick. Run one more time, move it back, move it here. Wow. All right. Well, <laughs> what would happen <laughs> here? Let me, let me pull up one of the tests. I Step actually two. have the, it always the, happens live. If it's going to happen. always so happens yeah. live. <laughs> always ha Test not that one. One moment, please. Not that one either. Well, oh, I see we do have a comment. It's not you, Dan Technology. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll test it once more. I did have this experience. I had to kind of do it a few times and then it started working. So when card moved, run once, move the card. <sighs> oh, well. what essentially happens is it gives us the task ID and it gives us the column name. So I've made a little filter here, ready for review, because that'll trigger on any column. And I only want the ready for review columns. So we then get the task details. The reason we get the task details is I want the assignee. I need to know who was the original assignee. And we save that in something that's called a data store. If you're curious about what that is, feel free to ask, but it's, it's a little bit technical. So I won't, I won't ramble about that. But we're basically but saving. Could you just slow down a heartbeat? You're just rushing through it. Just slow down a little bit if you could. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me. So we have the trigger when the column, when the board column is ready for review. It'll trigger, and we want to get the task assignee information. We're then going to store that assignee information for later. The reason, and I'll explain in a second why we store it for later. We then update the task to add the reviewer. So in this example, what I was hoping to test is when I move it to ready for review, it would add Marcus as an assignee, for example. Now we would have another automation waiting, this one below. This other automation is looking for in progress. When a task moves back to in progress, what it would do is it would get that original signee info that we saved and it would say, Dan, Dan was the original signee. So it knows Marcus wasn't the original signee. So remove Marcus. And that was essentially the automation when move to ready for review, add Marcus, we'll move back to in progress because there were revisions, remove Marcus. Now, at this point, someone would usually say, but hey, can't you, thanks again, Hannah, can't you just do that using the board triggers? And the answer is sort of, right? Yeah. So with the board trigger on ready for review, it's easy enough to add Marcus and use that update assignee function. So you would have in this example that Dan's been doing, you would have Dan and Marcus in the ready for review column. Perfect. The challenge here is that when you move it back, let's say Marcus has some, some revisions, so I want to move it back to in progress. Well, I no longer want to be on it. Unfortunately, the trigger in teamwork doesn't actually let you just remove yourself. It, it by default, adds remove anyone. 
which is super annoying. So, so you end up removing everybody from the task. There's no way to specifically just remove who was on it. So that's why we went to make in the first place so that we could do this uh, more efficient review process. Is there any questions for Dan on this? I mean, I'm sure there's a ton, but like we've got 45 minutes still. So let's let's make this a working session. Ask some questions and and hopefully uh, whatever's going on with Make will sort itself out because these were all working at five to 12. <laughs> yeah, I have a quick question because um, I'm just thinking about, you know, data is only as good as accurate as we are getting it into yeah. the system. So if somebody changes a board column or moves a task to a board column, when someone wasn't originally assigned, obviously you can add the reviewer, but if it goes back to in progress, how do you catch when somebody wasn't originally assigned to that task in the first place? Oh, like there was no assignee to the task, do you mean? Correct. Uh, I would say that's more of a process uh, challenge than a feature challenge. We would We always ensure that if it's on the board, it's because it is assigned and it is being worked on. So there's always at least, well, normally one assignee. We don't generally don't like having multiple assignees on a task. The review is the only exception. Mm, gotcha. uh, but to your point though, Hannah, and maybe Dan, you could show this just uh, mm. outside of this. If it was assigned to anyone, um, not even a team, right? Like if it was just left blank, which again, as Dan said, should never happen. You should never have anyone in your active project management cycle. Um, another approach we often take is we will have a project manager task list on each project and it's locked in private only to the project manager. And if a task isn't ready, I'm going to say bunny ears, um, we have a standard, you know, where we, we have a task checklist and it's like, is it assigned to someone? Does it have a start date? Does it have a due date? Does it have an estimate? Does it have a description with adequate inputs and outputs? Is it dependent on things, et cetera, et cetera. That if, if all of that information, if any of them are a no, then those tasks stay in that private PM task list until they can be filled out. And then that, that task gets dragged into the appropriate task list or, or board column to, to actually have someone work on it. Uh, but to your point, if someone was to drag in any one card um, over to review, there are functions in Make where you could have it check to make sure that there is an assignee. And if there's not an assignee, then you could either just do nothing um, or you could do whatever you want. So, you know, Dan, you could probably show that really quick, what that would look like. Yeah. I don't know if it's a router, but uh, I know you were doing it when you were getting all fancy. It is a router. Okay. We would have some conditional logic on what is the assignee does, uh, or we would do it like this. There we go. Ass assignee exists. If it exists, it'll go up. If it doesn't, then this is the backup route. So then we would we would have a different action. Maybe we would do something like, let's look at the time logs on the task. Who who was working on the task? And based on whoever had the most time logs, assign them to the task. But obviously open conversation with what people are open to. But yeah, we would then get creative with what could we do there. Right. So chances are, and we're going to get into this in the next examples, um, mm -hmm. probably what we would do in this scenario just internally at How To Project is we use Slack as our central hub for communication. And Dan's going to show you a couple of cool examples that, that we've built and used because, again, the teamwork integration is great. Um, and one of the automations we have, for example, in teamwork, it's, it's just a native automation, is any task that is over three days late it goes into a private Slack channel called Project Admins, and the only people that are, live there are our project managers. So, you know, every morning, if there's stuff that is seriously late, that channel gets spammed with, with all the tasks and tells them, get on this, right? So it helps keep people uh, proactive. So what we would likely do here after this no in the router, there's no one assigned to it, we would probably have it send a message over to Slack into that project admin channel and say, hey, someone just did this, go fix it, and then have a teachable moment with them, <laughs> right? So it's whatever, it's whatever you want to do to, to leverage automation to help improve your process, right? Um, yeah, and, and the nice thing, I think, too, I'm not 100% sure, but what you could even do if you want to get really fancy is you could probably see who dragged the card over. You can. Right. And if you see who dragged the card over, then you could send that person a private message on Slack 
reminding them that, you know, according to the Proverbs of Productivity 316, we do not move cards that have no one assigned, right? And it could do that automatically. And then, you know, there's no embarrassment. There's no talking down to. It's just, oops, yeah, my bad. And then they can go fix it if that's, you know, your work model. If it's not, if it's more agile and less waterfall, then that might be a good solution as well. So yeah, the router is a really powerful tool that that lets you do all kinds of fun options. Yeah, I think I would send them the message that since you moved one that was unassigned, it is now assigned to you. There you go. And then you could do that. So right after the slide, you you get to, you get to complete it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you would, you'd figure out who dragged it over, send them the Slack message and then assign them to the task. (laughs) So you could do all of that easily and make, um, which again is, is why it's such a powerful platform, but Great question, Hannah, uh, and wonderful comments, Lynette. It's good to know I'm not the only one that's uh, devious and cynical about this stuff. So, yay. There we All go. Right. I just had to delete that other one. But this is what oh, it looks okay. like when it sends through. You do get the, uh, who moved it? You get the event person, and then you get the task ID, project ID, et cetera. And then you get the column details ready for review. So that's what I'm filtering off of. But it doesn't give the assignee. That's why I got to do the get assignee. Yeah. Any more questions about this automation before we move on? Uh, this is just kind of a minor thing, but um, I mm-hmm. when I normally build these out, I I separate them and I, I just have one sort of one single scenario in each one. Oh no, that's um, but I yeah. See you you're doing it the right way. In, okay, because I see yeah. that you have both of these in here, so I didn't know if that was just for demo, just for or demo. if you would. Okay, yeah. that that was kind of my question. I was like, I didn't even know you could do that, but um, <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, because okay. yeah, you'll see okay. the little power power icon at the beginning. Yeah, shows I would which think it would give you an error. Active. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it wouldn't know which one to run. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, that's, I was just yeah. making sure so I this is missed just for demo that. purposes. Okay. Perfect. Nope. Not missing anything at all. Okay. I mean, that would be handy. Could you imagine having just like one just scenario with all your scenarios. automations yeah. for that? It, it might be yeah. messy though with the descriptions and figuring <laughs> out where everything lives. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's a. I think it's a habit my team's developing for demos because we switched to Figma this year, and so everyone's getting so used to just having one massive board to work on and zooming in, zooming out, moving around, and and make is a lot like that as well. So. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, let's move on to your next example then, Dan. So the next example, very simple, nothing fancy going on other than maybe this orange one. This automation, what it does is when a project is created, automatically create a channel in Slack for that project um, and set the channel description. So this one, there's no webhook going on. This is makes built-in watch projects module right here. I did have to do something a little fancy here, which I'll show in a second. Um, Create the project channel based off the name and then set the project description based on what the, or the channel description based on what the project description was. Now, what I had to do that was a little bit fancy was if any of you manage Slack workspaces, you'll know that Slack channels, they don't let you put a space. You can't do test space project has to be test dash project or test underscore project. And so I had to mess with the project name a little bit by replacing all the spaces with dashes. And then I came into a little problem in which it also doesn't like anything uppercase and it's not smart enough to automatically make it lowercase. So I use this little function to automatically make all the characters lowercase. But yeah, that's the automation. Very simple. It's just creating a project channel when a project is created in teamwork. So what I, I love, uh, yeah, I love Dan's humility. It's only four steps and he's like, yeah, a little fancy, but you know, it's so simple. It's the, it's sometimes the simplicity that kills us. Like when you get into the fact that, okay, what's going on in this step? Oh, I need the text parser. I can't use spaces because makes not going to inherently tell you that necessarily. You're just going to run into an error. So, so the debugging skills is is a large part of just the experience that comes from from using these types of platforms, as you know, those of you that have used it uh, understand. And then even from going to the create project channel and using a, a supporting function and make to lowercase everything, again, that th- these two parts, these two middle parts, probably are what took the most time. Creating that scenario was a matter of minutes, but understanding why it's not working is is a huge piece of it. So Dan, just out of curiosity, how mm. would you figure out when you first created it? How, how did you know something was wrong? Um, 
essentially the automation looked like this to begin with. So I didn't have that. I just had these three. And when I, I ran it, and you I had no lowercase okay. either, right? Yeah, it had no lowercase. Let me remove that. It just had name, right? Project name. And so when I ran it, immediately I got an error. And it does tell you a good chunk of the time. It said, uh, it just said that there was a name, like the, the it couldn't take the name. It was rejected. The project name was rejected. And I just, I remembered, I'm like, oh, right. It wants dashes. Okay. Um, and so I, I, I added the text parser and I put the output of the text parser in here without the lower, right? Just like that. That didn't work either. Now this one didn't, it didn't tell me really. It just said error with the name again. And I'm like, let me look at Slack. And I, I just happened to identify everything as lowercase. Let me try that. And it worked. Right. So yeah, a lot of it, like you said, it's just the experience of, of the tools that you use. Um, I'm not using that as a sell point, but that's exactly why we're doing these types of webinars so that when something like this happens, you're going to be like, oh, I wonder if, right? So it just gets us thinking in a different way when we're looking at our scenarios, because there's the logic of going from point A to point B to point C to point D, but what is what is stopping us and, and just trying to figure out why. Um, also, because I, I believe all of you registered, uh, all of you, all of you, the, the hordes registered um, from our, our teamwork Slack channel, correct? So by all means, it's a great community and we've been helping each other out already. So of course, if you do run into issues, our internal rule um, at How To Projects is if you're stuck on something for more than 15 minutes, get help. And, and I'm going to give you guys that same challenge. If you're stuck on something here for more than 15 minutes, reach out to us. We're happy to help you out because, you know, we're all we're all in this together with teamwork. So I want to make sure that, you know, we're supporting each other and promoting each other and really, really letting the world see how good teamwork is. Because, you know, especially in North America, they're only starting to begin their, their marketing here for some reason, right? Is there any questions on this second scenario? Pretty straightforward. Okay. I'm also going to try to save time, guys, in case you have questions like, hey, we tried to do this. Let me share my screen. This isn't working. Do you have any idea why it's not working? That kind of thing. We're going to make sure there's time for that as well. And okay. put Dan on the spot. He didn't know I was going to do that. Okay. The next automation. Uh, now, this one, I will admit, the, the so this automation came from, I used to work at a, at a music label. It was my first job in this sort of PM operations role. And every day, at the end of the day, we were told to send a daily status message on, this is what I worked on. This is what I completed. These are my blockers. And sometimes I forgot, or sometimes it was, it was tedious because I worked weird hours too. Do I send it now? Update it later? It analysis paralysis, right? And so I'm like, let me do what I do best and be lazy. Let me automate this. <laughs> And it actually took me a while to automate it. This automation is what taught me how to use data stores. Um, so what this automation does is it uses the same trigger as the first automation we talked about when card moved, right? So we've got in progress, ready for review, client review, completed. When card moved, get the task details and store the data. We're going to store it. Was it a completed task? Is it in progress? Like what are the details that we're saving? So you can see it's storing the task ID, task name, column name. Now I'm going to try and Marcus do call me out if I go too fast because there's a number of steps here. <laughs> Essentially, we got time. Just yeah. slow it down. Essentially, what I'm doing is only get the in progress tasks, right? So it, it pulls all of those tasks that are in progress and we're using what's called a text aggregator. So it's taking um, task one, task two, task three. And it's putting it all into one message, one message with bullet points. The reason being, and so it does that with completed tasks, ready for review tasks, et cetera. What that then enables me to do is this, my daily status working on. And then I just put the text that was generated over here, here. And so the output looks something like this. It looks something like this. You can see my daily status working on and you know, set up Facebook ads retargeting campaign completed. There's nothing completed yet. I think there's a completed one in this example when I was testing it, got some blockers, um, but this is the example output. Um, and yeah, and that was how I 
I didn't tell anybody I automated that at the music label. Nobody found out for months until I told somebody. <laughs> I was quite proud yeah, of that. I love that he takes the efficiency of agile methodology stand-ups and then, you know, makes it even more efficient by just not participating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Let's just automate our stand-up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's in a nutshell, that is the automation. Does anyone have any questions about data stores, text aggregator, or or anything about this automation? Where where it is useful, I mean, I love the stand-up example, but mm -hmm. um, a slight variant on this is again, someone mentioned it earlier that the tool is only as good as the people using it, right? It's only as good as the data going into it. And oftentimes we know that people aren't updating, you know, their percent progress and whatever. And that's something we use board triggers for each stage. We just automatically update it. But one of the worst things is, you know, especially being a global team with different hours is the client could call at any hour of any day for us. And we have to be able to give them an update. The people working on it could be asleep, right? So, so we make sure that whatever their end of day is, that if they run something similar to this and they target their project manager in Slack, that that project manager, you know, they don't have to go looking through teamwork even to see what's going on. It's all there condensed in that one message. And we could get even fancier with it. You could probably figure out how to include the URL. So if more details were needed, you could just click on that message in Slack. It'll open up in teamwork and then boom, you're having a good conversation with the client and you sound like you know what's going on, even though the person's asleep and you have no idea what was happening, right? So, so by leveraging the tools and leveraging the automations, we're, we're, it's, it's not just about you know, being lazy, it's about equipping each other for success, right? Because no one wants to look bad in front of their clients like when your make automation doesn't work in your webinar. All right, cool. Was that the third one, Dan, or was that the second that one? The that was the one. third one. This was okay, the, that was the third one. You just yeah. motored through them. All right, <laughs> so I will, uh, I will take over sharing the screen again. And again, you guys can interrupt at any time. Feel free. Doesn't bother me in any way. Cool. All right, so we went through that, we went through that, we went through that. So why do we automate the small things? Does anyone have any ideas? Like what, what is the benefit of automating the small things instead of coming up with like, you know, big colossal automations? It's a discussion point. Yeah, I think it's just, it's the small things that suck all your time away because you think that they're small things. And so it's not that big a deal to you. You don't worry about automating the small things, but all those small things add up to a lot of time throughout the day. They absolutely do. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. That's, that's a very good reason why we automate it, the small things. I think it also helps you look for those automations in the bigger things because it gets you used to working in it and um, building out those scenarios. And then you're able to see how to build out those larger things. And sometimes it's not necessarily knowing exactly how to do something. It's just knowing that it can be done. Yeah, no, absolutely. For sure. Um, yeah, no, I agree. That's exactly why. In fact, there's a great story. There's two stories I want to tell here is, uh, does anyone remember Cadbury Thins? Did they have those in the US or anything? We had them up here in Canada. Do you guys remember that chocolate bar at all? Okay, so Cadbury Thins, I'm going to say this to a group of women. So, you know, please don't crucify me. Um, I used to work in digital marketing advertising for 25 years before getting into teamwork back in 2007. And then, you know, the rest. Um, Cadbury Thins was marketed by Cadbury as a hundred calorie chocolate bar, right? And, and the way they marketed it was as a little guilty pleasure to women. So you'd see these ads with like, you know, women coming out of the gym and she'd be like, oh, you're eating a chocolate bar. And she goes, oh, it's only a hundred calories. It's a thin, right? And they're all like, hee, hee, hee. So they marketed it to women as this not healthy chocolate bar, but as something that wouldn't even make a difference. Like it's okay to eat this chocolate bar right? Um, and the reason it's not around anymore, it was actually gone after a year, is because to your point about the small things, if you add up 100 calories, 100 extra calories per day, that equals 10 pounds of fat per year. So you had all of this marketing saying, yep, it's okay, it's only 100 calories. And you had all these customers getting fat, 
her and they were not pleased at all. So there was this small public outrage and then Cadbury's like, yeah, we shouldn't have marketed it like that. And so they pulled it from the shelves and it's quite, quite the funny story. Um, a more relevant and more recent story that I'll tell you about that, that also illustrates this point is in 2020, we were hired by a very large uh, enterprise organization here in Canada. And uh, we were to come up with how to stop them from having so much time wastage. So part of that was moving from waterfall to agile, like safe agile, which is the scaled agile framework for enterprise, if you guys aren't familiar with that. Um, basically waterfall to contemporary waterfall. Uh, part of it was, you know, reducing the amount of different tools used and streamlining some of the processes. Like none of this had to do with teamwork specifically as of yet. And even, you know, working with the company to um, go from doing everything on premise to introducing SaaS solutions, because a lot of enterprise liked to roll their own softwares and stuff. So working with some brilliant, wonderful people, there was this idea of, okay, with that many employees that they had, if we could save them 10 minutes a day, what does that, what does that mean? And we came up with this 272 mandate, which targeted three things. It targeted, how do we reduce the amount of time searching for files and emails? Like just search in general, how do we reduce that? Because that's a massive time waster. Two, better project management principles, because when you have uh, organized project management tools, systems, processes, then people can actually get things done. And then their third one was meeting management. People were chronically showing up late for meetings, meetings inevitably ran over, everything was always booked back to back to back to back to back. So when would you actually get any work done? So we came up with this 272 mandate. And the reason why we called it that is um, the happy ending to the story is that the projection showed that by saving each employee 10 minutes per day, that would equate to $272 million in savings over the course of a year. It's crazy how scalable these types of things are. These little lazy, small automations do such an amazing, amazing um, thing in, in helping us get more done in less time. And, and ultimately, that just means more profit for everyone. I don't know about you. I would love an extra $272 million in my company right now, right? And that's just, that's just savings. That's not, that's not even what they spend. But anyway, thought I'd share that. Um, what else is there? That's it. We're at the Q&A part. So this is where you guys can say, yep, I got 20 minutes. <laughs> Andrea just got here. Sorry, Andrea. We are going to put this on YouTube. Um, we could probably do the whole thing again because it didn't take that long. But um, I want to make sure we have time together for you guys to share any questions you have about make or teamwork um, and, and how we can work those things together. So I'm just going to open it up to, to you guys. Any questions? Oh, come on. You must have come here with questions. I know uh, Hannah's got questions. I have a larger scenario in mind, but um, I think I had asked okay. a question on the partner uh, solution. You know, we have a lot of people who migrate from other um other products and you know a lot of times they have custom fields and this and that obviously that doesn't import well you end up with a lot of um manual work unless you are um doing this you know parsing it out using make so i haven't used make for that and i know you guys have i was curious i know that's a lot larger scenario so i don't know if we have time to go through something like that yeah um I think I think that one, if you want, uh, I'll put up, you know, what? I'll put up my calendar link mm -hmm. in, in our Slack chat uh, in, in teamwork. If you want to book some time with me, uh, I'm actually going over we because of you, we actually took a look at it and thought, yeah. how can we how can we make this out into a viable product? Not necessarily yeah. for you, per se, but for yeah. others. So yeah. so we've been reworking it a little bit. But yeah, essentially, we're, <laughs> you're gonna laugh, but we've uh, put chat GPT into the middle. Yeah. Um, because chat GPT is, is a viable option inside of make, and it goes through reads all the custom fields, parses them out for us, and then recreates them to go into teamwork. Um, yeah, and, and just that makes sense way. because yeah. that's where we're running into issues is uh, we were using this with ClickUp and it's the trouble is creating the custom fields like you, you that's know, right. it, it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to make the custom fields. So that's kind of the difficult right. part. 
Right. So yeah, you can't do that just as a strict scenario. That option is not yeah. available. Custom fields aren't available. So we're actually rolling it as a make custom app. Yeah. Um, and I don't so that know. It can be productized. I'm assuming it's the same with teamwork, but when you use it with ClickUp, if you have custom fields that you're working with, it then converts them to a number and you then have to, to go in and I, and sort of identify and say, Hey, number five equals this, you know, um, to give it the name for the custom field so well or, yeah. or the entry i'll go the, ahead dan the item yeah i i was just gonna say in in make specifically um it probably would act the same because you'd have to go through the api directly mm -hmm. lynette but in make and teamwork make does not a, a, enable you in the teamwork ready-made modules to do anything with custom fields yeah, yeah. So, so we're happy, like I can go over, that's a more advanced make session on how do you develop your own custom apps? Cause that's, that's just pure developer stuff. Um, but I'm actually reviewing the, the revised uh, app later this afternoon. So I'll, I'll put my link in our, in our Slack chat. And if you want to, uh, if you want to take a, a moment and book some time with me in the next week or whatever, we can, hopefully it'll be working and we can take a look at that together. Cause <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I will yeah. say the only other thing I'll say is that, you know, we, uh, we've I've done some not with BTC and in a separate instance um, with a with a client. I've done some really complicated um, things with with Make and ClickUp that we just never would have figured out without their support team. Their support team is really fantastic. If you reach out to them and say, "Hey, I'm trying to do this, I cannot figure it out," they'll book time with you and they will sit there and parse through it with you. And it, you know, um, they've been really good about that with some very complicated scenarios. Oh, hundred percent. Like we've been working on them with um, understanding everything to do with uh, expenses and accounting. So trying to, you know, get things weighed is a very popular accounting software up here. Uh, we use it. So, so trying to get anything to do with invoicing and such through make uh, on the teamwork side, very, very challenging. And, and things that to your point uh, with ClickUp, the ClickUp make integration, if you say get all projects, then boom, you have all projects, but that doesn't exist in the teamwork integration. You literally have to do a for loop all the way through them and pull every single project and aggregate it. Uh, and that's the same for all people, all tasks, all task lists, all milestones. It just, they're not there. So we've been working with make to say why. Uh, and then the biggest thing, my favorite thing that exists for ClickUp and some of the other PM tools in Make is Make API Call. So if it's not in Make, they have a module that allows you to make the API call yourself, but they don't have that for their teamwork integration. So I don't know if it's yeah. just volume, not enough people using the teamwork. Make I don't know. There was a lot of chatter early on, like that, that the make company um, originally may have used ClickUp or something because they just had so many ClickUp um, automations and it, they're just not there for the other um, products. I've never ha heard any confirmation yeah. of that, but they just have far more for ClickUp than they have for anything else. It's it's more, I would say it's not even far more for ClickUp. It's far more for everything else <laughs> except teamwork. Because <laughs> I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've done it with Monday.com, ClickUp, um, Airtable, et cetera. All of those, I can, whatever I think I can do, I can then go in and like, oh yeah, I could do it. But I apply that same logic to teamwork is like, oh, wait, limitation, 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 limitation. So, yeah. Yeah. And I've noticed even like, and I thought maybe it had something to do like with volume or with um, how often it gets used. But even Notion, which is much newer to the field than teamwork, has already a more robust make integration than teamwork does. So it's something that I've flagged repeatedly over the last little bit with Melody. And uh, I know she's she's talked to the teamwork side, whoever liaises with with make and they're going to escalate it because they see it as a lost opportunity for sure. So we're all on the same page. We all want to make it better because, yeah, then we can do a lot more cool stuff with teamwork. Cool. No one has. I mean, Hannah, I love your office, by the way. What a great oh. layout. I thought it was virtual at first, but then I'm like, is it real? It's so funny. So many people think it's it's fake and it's real. <laughs> Touch the plant. Prove it um this one okay there you go yeah okay it's real <laughs> fair enough um but you look like you do like like you've got a question on your mind in, yeah. in one of your scenarios. I know this this focus is more around make in general but I was just curious sure. because we actually use make and zap um so I didn't know if you had opinions on or around like 
Are there gaps that Zap Zapier is fulfilling that Make cannot currently? Um, or is it more that you're like seeing that Make has more potential than Zapier at this stage when it comes to teamwork automations? Yeah, okay. that's a great question. So sorry, you can answer this one if you want, Dan. Um 99% of the time, a default to make just across the board. However, Zapier is a bigger platform. It's got more integrations. Even if the integration's there, Zapier may have more triggers that are desired than what make would have. And so what I've done in the past, just because I'm stubborn and I really like the conditional logic in make, because Zapier, if you've used the paths, it limits you to three paths. It's weird. I don't, I don't care for it. Um, I use Zapier for the trigger and then I send the data to make is <laughs> basically what I've, I've, I've done a good chunk of that in the past. Yeah. Nice. And that works internally for, for us. But um, I think for, for, from business point of view, there's two reasons why we go with make mostly um, is, is one we started with Zapier. Uh, it was the first one, right? It was, it was the one yep. that started this whole, whole integration thing. And so that was fantastic that we even had this ability. And what we, what we found was, was twofold. One, as they grew, their customer service got worse. And, and I, I did not enjoy their customer service after a while. So, so when we came on to Make, and as Lynette said earlier, I mean, Make bends over backwards to help you with things. And you don't get that from Zapier anymore. You just don't. Um, maybe it's changed since since we left them, you know, three, four years ago now. But I really enjoy, no, <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy the customer service of Make. The other reason is too, is often when we are doing implementations and integrations for clients, the whole idea is to reduce the number of tools being used. So we're like, okay, so we're going to use Zapier and we're going to use Make. And oh, by the way, we also need to use this other thing because neither of those ones does that. It just, it doesn't look as professional. It's the optics of it in my, in my eye. Um, so it really depends on their use case. If we can get away with just using Zapier and we know they're never going to need customer support like ever, then we will use that. But 99% of the time we're, we're going with make, especially it's just the custom apps part. It's the custom apps part that does it. Like you can't, you, you just simply, there's nothing like that in Zapier. Hmm. Especially with in general, I just find yeah. make easier to use. Yeah. Uh, personally, I, I feel like it's just easier. I don't, I mean, it's nothing in particular. I just, I, I have less issues, especially with testing. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can see the oh, whole agreed. thing. Right? Yeah. 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 Because As you a can platform, see it. You, it's you, can, you can click in and see all the, the bundles and, and I don't know. I just, I can see it a lot easier in make than in Zapier. And let's not forget yeah. that you can have cute little mustaches around Halloween yeah. and make. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I love that. <laughs> um, but some, of, but we've also heard opposite feedback uh, from make as well. Like some, some clients they find like if, you know, when we hand off the scenarios to them, um, Sometimes because of the complexity of the different panels, like there's so many properties, so many methods, so much dynamic data, a lot of times they, they find that overwhelming because they have no programming background whatsoever. Whereas with Zapier, it's, it's pure front end. Uh, I actually hope, I, and I don't know if they will, but um, do any of you do 3D printing? This seems like a really off topic thing, but it's related. Right. So, you know, in your slicing tool, how there's typically, whether it's a Cura or, you know, a Prusa slicer or whatever you're using, they have a simple view, uh, an intermediate view, and then the advanced view. I love that because if Make did the same type of thing, you know, you had the simple view, that's basically Zapier, right? So, so you could do like for like and never have to get confused. But as you, as you progress in your education on how to do these things, then you're like, oh, let's open up the advanced view. And, oh, that's too much. Let's go back to intermediate. Okay, now I can learn some new things. And I think there's, there's an opportunity there to really do it because, uh, yeah, the first, the first 3D stuff I did back when it, when it first started, there was no views. It was just every single option. And even as a guy who went to school for programming, who's been around this stuff his whole life, who loves cutting edge technology, I was completely and utterly and overwhelmed and just printed a lot of spaghetti for weeks. So, yeah. I do yeah, think that Make thing. has a long way to go with their um, training materials. Um, you know, we did their training materials. They're not all the way built out. And the scenarios that they give are overly simplistic. Um, that whole, yeah. let's go get the weather in London and then put it on a spreadsheet. Okay, great. That's fantastic. But that's not what I'm trying to figure out how to do in, in business. They need to do, and, and they kind of get into it when you get into some of the other, you know, features and things like that. But it's really, really simplistic and it's and then I think they 
um, they're, you know, they had the, um, maybe it was the aggregator, but they hadn't done the um, iterator piece yet. I think maybe they just mm. added that, but like they haven't gone all the way through all of those features that you can use. And um, I haven't done their, I need to do their partner training because she sent us that um, and I need to do that. So maybe it does a little bit better job, but there's just, there's a lot of training that's not there. So I think there's an opportunity to do a lot of training on this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know what, that's an opportunity for us too, because uh, I love doing trainings. I love like what we're doing here, but I've created so many training videos in my life. It's ridiculous. So maybe there's an opportunity there to get them to outsource some of it could just be a capacity issue. So yeah, we'll take a look at that as a partner um, and see what we can do there. Cool. Andrea. So I know you joined us late. Um, hi, there you are. Hi, so sorry. It's all going to be available on YouTube. That's okay. Um, but did you have any questions while you're here? We did go over some scenarios. Oh, okay. See you later, Hannah. Um, we did have some scenarios that we reviewed that, that you'll be able to go through some useful integrations with Slack and, you know, how to do a daily project report at the end of the day with what you accomplished, what you're working on, what you're blocked on, doing that all automatically. Um, we, we did a couple of cool things and, and walked through it with, with, with the group. Did you have any specific questions that you came to the webinar with? No, I think you probably covered everything that I wanted to cover. And I apologize that I had an impromptu right. meeting I needed to attend. Uh, no, it happens. But uh, now you're going to be publicly apologizing on YouTube forever. <laughs> forever. But uh, I'm so glad you recorded it. And I'm going to be looking at it as soon as it's made available. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So um, yeah, we'll post it, of course, in the partner Slack channel. That's where, where you registered as well was through the partner channel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, we'll do that. Um, now it is the end and I don't want to take up too much time, but as a partner, you know, everyone's heard train the trainers and stuff. So I do want to let you guys know that we are about to release the early access to our teamwork mastery course. So we've been working with teamwork on an advanced teamwork training course that talks about some stuff like this. Uh, gets into agile project management, waterfall, hybrids, how you use those in teamwork, in depth into reporting and metrics and all the stuff you don't get from the uh, Teamwork Academy and the YouTube channel. So I'm going to be putting that out into the Slack uh, channel, the partner channel, to get people in uh, at a discount just because we want to get feedback and make any adjustments we need to before we release it to the public. So I am going to encourage you guys that if you enjoy our teaching style and, you know, what we do and how we help out, then that's, that's how you could support us. That's, that's the sales pitch today. That's it. All done. Okay. Now, for Great. those of you watching on YouTube, if you go to howtoproject.ca, uh, click on learn and you'll be able to access the teamwork mastery course there. Got to put that in there, of course. Right. Okay. And with that, have yourselves a wonderful day and thank you so much for, for being here and helping us kick this series off. Uh, we will be posting more and creating more of these probably one or two times a month on various topics. So uh, right after this, I'm going to pop in, send a link to our form for what other topics you would like to see around teamwork. Thanks, thank Dan. You. Thanks, Marcus. Anytime. Thanks, Take guys. Care, everybody. This was great. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.